Yes, come. Father God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God, that he would come and he would touch each and every one of us here with a new fire, with a new power like we've never felt before. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. Would you turn with me to Luke 6? <sighs> uh huh. And 38. I bet everybody knew that, though, right? Do we have any first time visitors? Probably not. Anyone need an offering envelope? You'll keep your hand up till our usher gets ushers get to you so they know who wants one. Mm, glory to God. Glory to God. What did everybody think about the revival? Everybody have a good time at the revival? Yeah, it was hot, but man, it was wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I like that. Just getting warmed up. We have a lot to do in this neighborhood. We have a lot to do in this town, this city, and all around us. We need that new fire, and we need that new power. We're in a new season. Everybody realizes that, I hope. As Christian people, we are in a new season. Amen. Now more than ever, we need to be putting the word out. We need to get the word out there that God is good and that God loves them no matter what they've done wrong. <laughs> he still loves James. <laughs> he still loves me. God is good. You know, you haven't done anything bad enough that he don't love you. I just want everyone to hear that this morning. Within the sound of my voice, Jesus loves you. Amen. 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 Ah, give, and it will be given to you. Amen. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put back into your bosom. Put back in. Whew, that's good news. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. It's pretty simple, right? You give and God gives. You ever, I, I said this Friday night, but I'll repeat it tonight. Some men bake. So have you ever took brown sugar to measure a cup? A cup of brown sugar, you got to press it down, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only the pastor, right? <laughs> Shaking together. You, you ever kind of shake it a little bit to see if you can get a little bit more in there? You just kind of shake it. Kind of like playing with pop bottles when you were young. You can't do that anymore. You can't pick up a pop bottle off the road anymore and put rocks in it and play with it. You never know what they did with that pop bottle. That's how you make shake and bake. You know, you need to encourage your children not to be picking up bottles and putting rocks in them. They'll never get to have as much fun as us. Remember going outside and playing and just having a good time? Playing tag. You're it. Drinking out of the garden. You know what? Following up or filling up the swamp cooler with a water hose. Drinking as much as you're putting in. <laughs> That's what we had growing up. Water cooler. Yeah. Black and white TV. Man, God has blessed us. <laughs> and uh huh. Uh-huh. And they won't have to put up with some of the things we did either, will they? But they'll never get to enjoy what we enjoyed. Now, James, the other day, he 
we was uh, taking all the grandbabies up to uh, McDonald's, which is a few blocks from the house. It's not very far. And he let them ride in the back of the truck. I know. Even the baby rode in the, the two-year-old rode in the back of the truck. They had so much fun. Can we do it again, Papa? <laughs> Man. But kids today don't normally get to experience that, do they? The world has taken so much away that we can't do anymore. But you know what they'll never take away? Us worshiping Jesus. They can't have it. You're right. That's it. They didn't give it. But they're trying. But they just got to know. We as Christians, we're not going to stop. And we're going to keep praying for them. We're going to pray for them that they would repent. And that they would turn from their evil ways. And do good for this country. I love the 4th of July. Independence Day. 245 years. And again, I want to thank any veteran out there. Any veteran. Thank you. Thank you. Without them, we couldn't celebrate the 4th. We wouldn't have a reason to celebrate the 4th of July. But because they gave, some gave more than others, we do get to celebrate. That's a good thing. And I don't see any of us laying down quietly and letting them take that from us. Not if you're a Christian. Kind of hard to be quiet about a lot of things. So yes, they are trying. But good measure. I got to get back to this. <laughs> Press down, shaking together, now running over. Running over. You can take a pitcher and pour it into a bowl and pour and pour. And it's going to run over eventually. It's just going to run over. And that's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to go to the well and get so filled that when we walk by someone, we splash. Ooh, what is that? Can you come here and talk to me a minute? They feel it. They feel it. When we're so full of the Word of God, we don't even have to say anything. I've, I've, I've told this story, and I'll say it again, that I went to a, a roadside flea market with my mom. And I had this old spelling book in my hand, and it was old, too. Yeah, it was. Kindergarten through sixth grade, all in one book. Anyway, this lady, I heard her saying, now you're one of them there Christian people, aren't you? And I looked up just to see who she was talking to. And she was talking to me. Me. <laughs> That's splashing over. That's letting their spirit line up with your spirit. We got to splash. And when you think you're drained and you're empty because there's people out there that will suck the life out of you. Anybody know any of them? Oh, they will suck it out. Just keep going back to the well and keep getting filled up. We have a job to do. And, you know, it looks like, man, have you seen the cost of groceries? I went to the grocery store yesterday. I think I was in shock. Wow. I mean, it hadn't been but a couple weeks you know, since I'd been there. But, wow. And we could give up, couldn't we? There's no hope left. Yes, there is. As long as Jesus is in your life. There's hope in this world. And we're, we're so... Can't wait to get to heaven to have what God has to offer us. Wake up! We can have it here. We're to bring heaven here. Amen. Now I'm preaching. That's James's job. Okay. <laughs> but we do have... We need to bring heaven down. You know, we don't worry in heaven. There's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no pain. There's no worry. Bring heaven to where we are. Thank you.
They didn't like my voice on the orange one. Oh, okay, yeah, this one's blue, yeah. You got a red one, a white one, we'll just display them out here. Would y'all pray over your offering and I'll come back with a corporate prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the freedom that this day means to every American. We thank you, Father God, for you, for your Son, for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that is present with us this day. We say thank you, Holy Spirit. We need a new fire. We need an awakening. We need... We need to realize your power and operate in it more now. Father God, I just pray that everyone who hears the sound of my voice, that Father God, they know what I'm talking about and that they are searching for that power that only you can give. Ooh, Father, I just ask that you bless everyone this day. Bless them tonight with safety. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just adjustments, brother man. Hallelujah. Huh? You don't have to turn it up loud for him. What are you trying to say? Nothing, honey. Can you turn me down a little bit? It's still too loud. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God's so good, isn't He? Hallelujah. Scooter, what happens when I turn this on now? Huh? Hallelujah. Okay. Cool deal then. That's what we need. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. God is awesome. We have a couple things that we want to, well, we want to talk over, discuss a little bit about before we get into the message, if that's okay. Uh, Kinetic, come on up here and, and we'll start with you, hon, if you want. Uh, we need to pray for Kinetic's mother. She will share a little bit with you. Uh, she got a phone call today, this morning. Okay, here you go, hon. So um, I got a phone call this morning right before I left to go to church, and my uh, mom had a heart attack this morning. She's, uh, she had a heart attack last night, so she was in the hospital this morning. Um, uh, if, if I can give you just a tiny snippet of a background, I was adopted, and this is my um, biological mother. Um, I, met my, I met them when I was 23 years old, and they saw me go through all of my stages. They saw me going through my dating the girlfriend stages. They saw me going out and partying hard. They saw all of these stages and all this trouble that I got into. And now, you know, uh, they're, they're seeing the stage that I'm in where, you know, I belong to the Lord. I make that known. They know that. And um, this morning, my uh, sister-in-law, when I was talking to her, she was open to hearing about the Lord. She was open to hearing about prayer. My niece, who is having a hard time and uh, she's just really having a hard time and for the past several years. She's now starting to listen when I tell her that my way out of the despair that I was in was Christ. So there are so many miracles going on um, that it is, it's just amazing. Uh, the other thing that I'd like for us to pray about is um, yesterday afternoon we had... Um, uh, a woman died by suicide in the building that I live in. Her children were home. It broke my heart. It broke my heart to think about somebody who had so much despair in their lives that they couldn't see any way out. And I know what that despair is like. I've been there, man. I, I know that darkness and I know how comforting it seems, but it's all a farce, man. That ain't comfort. That's hell. And I just, you know, my heart just breaks for that woman who was in just so much pain and despair. But for those children who now have inherited that, I, I want to pray that we just, you know, bind that and we stop that and, and pray that they have support 
they have godly support surround them. We pray. Let's pray. What's your, what's your birth what's that? What's your, her name? Your birth mother's name. Sydney. 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 Oh. S-I-G-N-E. Yeah. This is Sydney right here, too. Sydney, well, Sydney. Father, Sydney. huh? Sydney. 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 Like Sig. Yeah. Knee. Uh-huh. Sydney. Okay. That's what I said. Yeah, Sydney. Uh-huh. <laughs> Father God, we just lift up this these issues with you right now. Father God, we lift up her mother. Father, that's um, dealing with some hard issues. Father God, we speak the authority that you have given to your believers, Father God, to, to speak over sickness and diseases and expect these things to line up because of what your word declares, Father God, that we have the capability of doing. So heart, be healed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that every part of it will function as it was created to function. So, Father God, the issue that she is having, Father, let it be healed, completely healed in Jesus' name, because your children in this house right now have come in agreement with this prayer, that they be healed. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Father God, we lift up these children, too. Father, you know, I have spoken many times, and I'll speak, speak about it again today a little bit. But, Father, <clears throat> the authority that we have as believers... See, Father God, you have given us the ability and the authority to command, to speak to things and command things to be manifested because of who we are in you. So, Father, these children, the, the spirits, the curses or whatever it is that's on that family, Father God, in our church right now, agree with me, that we bind that spirit. We bind that spirit of confusion, hurt, anger, whatever it is, Father God, whatever it is that, that has hindered this lady into committing suicide. Father God, we pray for her little old soul and spirit, Father God, that all things are possible with you. And Father God, that she is in your presence today and you're ministering to her, Lord Jesus Christ, and you're reconciling her unto you, Father. And we just pray over the children, Lord, that you send people across their paths, Father God, that they will be able to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and all that he's done for us, Father God, that it will break all bondages and all, all things upon them children, Father God, because they were born into this world. And Father God, maybe they don't know the authority that they have in, in you, but we do. So Father, we pray and you send people that has your spirit living on the inside of them to minister to them and father god to break all the curses and all the things that's on that family father we give you the glory for this in jesus precious and holy name amen amen thank you thank you hon also my cousin uh doug and penny uh seem like every week something's attacking them every week they miss church for i guess for over a month now so you know what uh, whatever it is that keeps confusing their thoughts and their minds and, and sickness and diseases. See, that, that, that's not of God's children. If we're born again, then we should walk in exactly what God says that we should walk in, and that's divine health. So, Father, we speak to that. We speak to their family and command, uh, command that the, the devil take his hands off of them. Sickness and diseases leaves their body. Father God, that, uh, that they will see the light and see the truth and be able to apply that truth into their lives, Father God, just as we all need to have done and need to be doing, Father. And we thank you for this, and we give you the glory for it. Hallelujah. Also, we have another one we'd like to lift up. My daughter uh, is out of town, and uh, some of her friends were coming to where a bunch of people were going to be at this morning. They were riding a motorcycle at 3 o'clock this morning, and the bike went down. He's in very critical condition. She's got a lot of road rash and stuff. So my daughter called and asked if we would lift them up in prayer. So I, I don't know their names, but uh, God does. So, Father, we're just praying and interceding in their behalf, Father God. We ask you, Holy Spirit, if you will touch the gentleman that's in critical conditions, Father God. Father, I would love to see you do something supernatural in that hospital bed that that person will just supernaturally turn things around in his body. Supernaturally, healings will be manifested upon his body right now 
if they have not already been done because of prayers. I'm sure it's already been sent out. But Father God, we're looking, we're looking for your blessings to be a witness to all that's involved in this family, Father God. You know what the world says and things look like, but Father God, you have given us the power, the authority, the dominion, the covenant over all these things that we can speak exactly the desires of our heart, healing be released upon his body and her body. And I thank you, Father God, for your supernatural blessings that it will be such an, oh man, it, I, I can, man, it's going to be such a blessing that things to be turned around supernaturally. The doctors don't know why, what happened, but, they're, but it's done in Jesus' name. And my daughter will also witness this power and this authority we're speaking of, you know. Uh, hallelujah, Father God, I thank you. There's a few things I'd like to say, but I'm not going to because that's personal. <laughs> but Father God, I thank you because of your great love that you have for us. I thank you for your Holy Spirit being in this house here today. I thank you for the word that's being, going to be spoken here today that is going to have such an anointing on it that the words that I'm going to be saying, Father God, is going to give revelation knowledge into people's lives that they will truly get a hold of what you have been trying to tell us for centuries. Father God, I thank you for this. Father God, I give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, I think my brother-in-law wants to come up here and announce something right quick uh, before we totally get started in this thing. All right. Hallelujah. I know one thing. God is good. God is so good. Oh, yeah. Our little friend Sydney here, also, I want to share something. You want to share with them? Okay. Okay. After, uh, okay, here, go ahead. Go ahead. And, well, go ahead then. Go ahead and share the blessings God's put on you. I like blessings too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, um, Father, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. we know that back I'll in December. I had a uh, issue with my feet where we went in and they cut them open and scraped out all the diseased tissue from diabetic ulcers. And it, there you go. okay, and they cut my feet open from the end of the toe all the way back to the heels. And I was released two days before Christmas from the hospital. And they said they were going to have to take both of my feet off. Well, I lost a toe on each foot. And the right foot is healed. This bandage is just padding. The left foot has a small sore left the size of my pinky nail. And it will be gone in two to three weeks. And I will be fully healed on that foot, too. So from having my feet removed to just having one toe lost on each one is the power of prayer yes. and the power of God. Amen. So. Amen. Amen. Yes, we definitely, we've been praying for, for a while. Amen. So pray over my wife. Go ahead yeah. and pray over my wife. Don't come over here. <laughs> Other than I was talking to Rita earlier about some stuff, and she was telling me that she was having some issues with her, so I just want to pray over her. Um, one thing real quick as James was praying for this young man in the motorcycle wreck it came to me, he's healed 
That's all I got. I don't know what, I mean, it just said he's healed. Anyways, um, <clears throat> as much y'all know, me and Rita's been talking about it for a while now. Y'all know about our brother Frank, you know, what he's going through and everything. Well, um, again, BFC and GRC is coming together, and uh, we're asking for help. We're going to have a benefit for him August 7th here. We're going to have an auction and a dinner. The dinner is going to be donation only. It's going to be hot dogs and hamburgers, um, donation only. But what I'm asking from you guys is, and everybody on Facebook land, YouTube, whatever, as you know, auction, we need stuff to auction off. So we're asking for donations. You know, if you got a leather jacket, nice leather jacket, used leather jacket, boots, you know, knives, guns, <laughs> baskets, anything that anybody wants to donate so we can auction off, we'll take it. If you want to do a money donation, that's fine too. But uh, I know, you know, his stream will be done here in a couple of weeks. But he's still going to need finances to get through this. And 100% uh, of proceeds will go to Frank. So I just ask for your help in that. If y'all can help out anyway, give it me or Rita and let us know. August 7th, here. Uh, probably 7 o'clock. So thank you, Kaneda. Thank you. Lots of people. Facebook. Um, if you could go to biker websites and all that, you know. Put the word out. That'd be cool too. Yeah. All right. So uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Today is the day that we celebrate, you know, our Independence Day. Hallelujah. Lots of people out of church all over the world preparing to celebrate our independence. Amen. Amen. You know what? We got a lot of chaotic things going on in our world today. But um, one thing I know, I'm a, I'm a veteran and, and, and a Vietnam veteran and you know, I didn't get but on the evacuation part of it. But uh, I, I can feel, I felt a whole lot of things that I'm sure all the other men felt, men and women felt, and that is fear. You know, while when you're, I'm sitting out there on the coast of Vietnam at nighttime on a ship, uh, aircraft carrier, and been out there on, off, uh, on the coast with and a destroyer. And, you know, tonight we'll see a whole lot of glistening. We'll see a whole lot of, or all over our city because of the fireworks and things going off. You know, one thing I can tell you, that this whole island glowed all night long. It wasn't because of fireworks, but it was because of mortars, bombs, guns, stuff like this going on all night long, every night. You know, that's how many, you know, you can't imagine the, the lives that were lost. You know what, they, they can assume how many lives that were given and I say given because these men volunteered and went and served. You know what I'm saying? But not just, not just our people, but the people who we were also fighting. You know? We have, uh, we have people all over this country that we're in war against. But we always have to remember one thing. They are still a creation of God. You know? Even though sin came into this world and has misdirected a lot of people, every one of us until we received Jesus Christ, we were on that path of lost, being lost. But when we received Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, that drew us back into that relationship with Him and we were able to get back on the right path that God intended. Amen? 
You know, some things that's really been pressuring me in my heart, and, and, and that is, you know, we have some extraordinary teachers. We have some extraordinary speakers. And some of these can talk you out, talk you out of the britches you're wearing. You know? They, they have the gift of talk, the gift of gab. You know, and so often, so often we can go down a path and be misled. You know, this thing right here is a very special book. And it has been tried for countless years to be destroyed. And the things in it to be destroyed and misused, misspoken. Because, see, one thing I know, if you're born again, and if you truly understand who you are in God, who you really are in God, the power that you truly have to be able to operate in, the devil don't want you to know that. So he, so he allows and he manipulates and he Im confuses people and things like this to where a lot of times people get off the track on their teachings. But we live in a country of thousands and thousands and thousands and countless thousands of people that have gave their life. And we have the privilege that each and every one of us whom say we are born again children of God has the privilege of reading this book. Studying this book and finding out what the truth is in this book. So we can sit at home. We can watch these TV evangelists. We can sit at home and, and do a lot of things and, and be missed misled a lot of times or be uh, drawn from the power from the truth that's in the Word of God because the Word of God says do not forsake the gathering amongst ourselves. You know what I'm saying? That was printed in a time where they couldn't hold church. You know, it was Roman Catholic or something way back yonder. So what did they say? Don't forsake the gathering amongst ourselves. You know what he's talking about? He was talking about small groups coming together to worship God under a roof that if they found out about it, they would all be crucified. You know what I'm saying? But today, we live in a society that we can come to church and worship without having to worry about that. Do you think the Word back, was written back then that the Word is, applied, is here for us to apply to our lives today? Or do you think a lot of times this Word was just for those people back then, over 2,000 years ago. Huh? Today. It was written. You, why do you think, honestly people, television, lamb, whatever we're on, Facebook, YouTube, why do you think this book has been with us for over 2,000 years? 2,000, over 2,021 years. That's right. This is the hand of God. This is the breath of God. This is the voice of God. This is what God wants us to live by. It is up to you to study your word, meditate on it day and night, that you may show yourself approved. Huh? Don't, it's not about coming to church. I, I mean, God wants us to not forsake ourselves. Why? Because Kaneta had an issue today. Two issues today. She had a mother that needed prayer. She also had a family in her apartment that needed our help, and that's in prayer. We come together, iron sharpens iron. We come together to build each other up, to love on each other, to, <clears throat> to share the power and the anointing of our living God with each other. You know what I'm saying? Because if, you, if, if you're not sitting in the throne room of grace with God yourself, then sometimes we've we got to go down a path in order to learn certain things, right? 
the Bible is an instruction book before leaving earth. Huh? It's a biblical instruction book before leaving earth. But see, we have to understand. Let me ask you a question. This is one of my first questions I got up here. Think about these things before you answer them, please. How many of you have eternal life? If you would, raise your hand because I want to see how many of you don't have eternal life. Huh? Okay. How many of you know what eternal life means? Can I have an answer? Okay. Amen. See, if, if you, you know what, if you'll ask most churches and most Christian people, and this is what they relate it to, a free ticket to heaven. Huh? What is it? The brass ring. Mm-hmm. But see, this, see, the devil don't care. <laughs> that, could be, that could be exactly what it means as far as he's concerned. You know Why? Because, see, you have just taken the power out of the eternal life that God has blessed you and me with. You have taken that anointing from the Word that He has given to us to operate in while we're on this earth. Eternal life means that we have eternal destiny that is a benefit that we get. But the power that's in that Word is God Himself releases His power on the inside of you. That is the reason why you can lay hands on the sick. They get healed. That is the reason why you can speak to something and it lines up with what you speak, it, speak about. Because God Himself has placed Himself on the inside of you. See, we have cheesed, we have cheated, we have robbed from the power, the anointing of God's living Word in our lives. Eternal life means a relationship with our Father. Eternal life means that I can do what my Father does. I have the same power. I have the same anointing because God created me in His image. So I can do exactly what my Father says because I'm in Him and He is in me. Jesus said, I'm in my Father and my Father is in me. And I do exactly what I see my Father do. And I am in you. And you are in me. And we can do exactly the things that we see our Father doing. But yet, we have let this thing be misinterpreted. We have let it be and taken the authority out of it. To where, man, I tell you what, when I leave this earth, I get to jump on the first bus leaving out of here. I get to go to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. I mean, surely, come on. This, can, we, can, can we not do that? I mean, come, hey, we got a free ride to heaven, baby. You, you understand what I'm saying? The devil don't care. If that's what you think, because see, he understands one thing. If you're thinking these negative things, then you're not really understanding the power that you have in your own self when I receive the eternal life. The, the eternal life is God Himself released on the inside of you. That is eternal life. That is the authority that a believer in Him has. And that is the authority that my father walks in. Let me let me get here. Let me get back to my notes, okay? Ah, hallelujah. Were, were, we, were, were we not created in the exact image when God made man? God made him perfect. Perfect. Who else do you know that is perfect besides us? Born again Christians. Huh? That's right. Father God, Jesus Christ. We are created in His image. We are created in perfection. We are created to have dominion. Adam had dominion over the earth. Let me, let me read. Uh, let's see. The universe and all God created on the earth was magnificent. But man was God's masterpiece. See? 
we don't even understand. You're not really understanding the authority, the beauty, the, the magnificent that God has in His children. See, we have allowed the sin nature that we once lived in, or maybe you're still yo-yoing yourself. Woo! I live this way today and I pull back up. Oh, I'm going to go to church today. Boop! You know, but I'm going to live this way. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do, 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 do. You know what I'm saying? Back and forth like a yo-yo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. I'm not saying everybody's like me. But when I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, something truly changed in my life. And you know what? I never missed church. I never did miss church. You know, we went on vacation, and a lot of times we held church in our rooms. We went to another church. I love going to different churches. I don't have to be the one sitting up here in front. In front. I get to kick back and relax. Hallelujah. So much fun. <laughs> I, love being, I love being fed as, as well as I love sharing. Amen. Man was made in the very image of God. It was as if God pulled out a mirror. Are you looking? Huh? Are you seeing yourself? Pulled out a mirror and looked at himself as he created us. Perfect. Perfect. See, we have, we have trashed ourselves so much. You know, we have to understand. People, you need to study your Bibles. You need to study the Word of God. Because my Father created me to walk in perfection. My Father created me to perform perfection while I'm on this earth. Because we are one in another. Jesus went around, told the crippled man, you want to walk? Get up and walk. Come on, follow me. Yeah. He spit. Can you check that out? Man, somebody going to spit and make mud and you're going to put it in my eyes? We're going to have a talk, dude. I don't want your spit in my eyes. <laughs> huh? But Jesus did that and the blind man seen sight. Huh? You understand what I'm saying? He went around and he didn't scream and holler. He didn't shout. He didn't, he didn't plea and beg for all your money. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. He just spoke. You know what? He, he, he had so much money that he had a treasure. You know? Judas. I mean, he was his treasure. Hallelujah. But there were so many things going on and, and seeing God. What did Jesus do? What did he do while he was on this earth? Huh? That's exactly right. That's a byproduct of what, whom he was. That's right. That's a byproduct of whom he was. See, he understood that when he became union with Father God, that he was God himself on earth. Huh? I don't know if I believe what you're saying. I'm sorry if you don't. Stay confused. The devil don't care. He likes you confused. Huh? He does. He likes you to be confused. But each and every one of us are a God type on this earth. Because when we're born again, something special happens. The sin nature, because of Adam and Eve, is taken out of us. And God has placed His nature on the inside of us. And we become identical to Him. Huh? Hallelujah. Let's read... Uh, Let's read Genesis 1, 25 through 28 right quick, okay? It says, God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock, and small animals, each able to produce offsprings of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be what? What? What is it saying? That's right, like us. Who, who's, who, who's saying this? Huh? God made all sorts of us. We're talking about God Himself. Yeah, see? He said, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. See, we are 
God in the flesh. We have the authority of God on the inside of us when we become His child. Right? So see, we need, to, we need to learn to start getting a hold of this vision that God is trying to give to us. That way we can do what God intended for us to do while we're on this earth. Eternal, okay, living in heaven is a gift that we're also going to reap. Okay? We're going to reap that gift. Yes, He promised us in the twinkling of an eye when you leave this body, you're in the presence of God. Okay, we're going to get that, but that's not the reason why. That is not the reason why He gave you the eternal life. He gave you the eternal life so that you can be like Him. So that you can do the things that He is doing. Yes? Hallelujah. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and the livestock. All the wild animals on the earth and all the small, the scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in His own image. Hallelujah. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Wow. Fill the earth. And what does He say? Govern it? Yes. Rule over it. Did He not give Adam the right to rule over everything until He, done, he disobeyed God? Huh? He, he, yeah, He was over all of it. So, see, that's what He's trying to tell us. If we're children of God, we had that authority over the sicknesses, over the diseases, over the poverty, over the things of this world, if we're born again. We just have to understand in our hearts, life and death is in the power of the tongue. A lot of times we speak so many negative things and it's going to manifest. When you speak it out of your mouth, I think you need to have a wife like me. Because when I start speaking something out of she'll slap me. She'll slap my mouth. Say, what are you doing? No, she... <laughs> I, see the, I see the look in her eyes, you know. She might not be doing it, but she sure is thinking it. <laughs> No, not really. I'm just teasing you. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> Rain over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. We are to rule over them. Amen. Hallelujah. We are to rule over not born again Christians. Huh? We are to rule over them. I'm not saying abuse them or nothing, but we are to love on them, encourage them, and teach them so that they can make this transition one day. If we're abusive, if we look and live and act just like the world does, you can't tell us apart. Just like I've done a service uh, several years ago. Are we the church of God or are we the church of the world? Do we look like the world? Do we act like the world when we come here and worship God? Or are we the church of God? Do we teach God's Word? Do we, do we praise Him? You know, we had a little dispute in our church a while back of uh, playing secular music for praise and worship. They got some extraordinary, beautiful songs out there. But I want to tell you something. If we're not praising Jesus, praising God, and praising the Holy Spirit you'll find very few songs ever played in our church because we will always worship our Trinity, the kings of kings and the lords of lords. Amen? Amen? We will always worship them. We will always worship them in our words. We will always worship them. I pray, listen to me, every one of you. You will always worship Him by the way you're living your life in front of other people. See? This is what's going to win a lot of people in the relationship of God because they're going to say, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I see you always. Always. Even when things go bad, I see a smile on your face and you're always speaking and willing to pray and help somebody. See, I want what you got. Huh? If you're always being sarcastic, smart-mouthed, 
you know, thinking you're so hotty toddy you know, trying to put yourself up and other people down, there ain't nobody going to want to come to what you got. They ain't going to want to come there. Huh? They get enough of that in the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Everything was to produce after its own kind. And God continued that with His children. Did you get that? Huh? Did everybody get that? Are you a child of God? Then God continues that in His very own children also. So what my Father does, what He's capable of doing, you can do also. Huh? This is what God intended. God in intended for man to rule and reign and operate in His power, in His authority, in His anointing. Every bit of Him, He created us in His image. When we look at Him, when I look in the mirror, what do I see? I see me, but I also see my Father who lives in me. This is what we should be uh, uh, lining up with. This is what we should be understanding and getting ourselves in tune with. Because see, everything that we do in our life, if we are in tune with being Christ-like, then we begin to think just like Christ thinks. And then we begin to operating and doing the things just like Christ does. See, if you think of something different, if you're working and uh, doing whatever it is, you know, you're drawing yourself away from God and not to God. Because see, God intended us to be God on earth. Huh? God intended for us to go empty the hospitals out. Huh? God intended for the crippled to, to be healed. God intended for the demonic spirits for us to run from so we don't have to mess with them. Absolutely not. He created us so that we can go and speak to that spirit and command that spirit to be gone and lead this person just like He did to all the swines that went into the swines and they ran off the cliff and died. Hallelujah. See, there's enough people in the world for the devil's playhouse. But the thing about it is, and he's not really worried about a lot of you, because see, a lot of you are ignorant in the Word. I don't mean that bad. I'm not trying to be sarcastic or put anybody down. But a lot of people are truly ignorant in the Word because they do not understand what they have and the authority that they have, the authority that they're able to operate in. You know, my Father loves me so much. This is how I look at it, okay? And you guys can join me. But my Father God loves me so much that He's going to give me an opportunity that I'm going to go and pray for somebody. And uh, I, I'm not even going to stick around. I'm not even going to stick around and see if they received it or not because see, my Father can't lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when I pray for Him, I don't have to hang around to see if I see if I if I done something great. You know what I'm saying? Father God, in the name of Jesus, this person needs healed. And I'm believing by my covenant that I have with my father that that person's healed. And I'm going on about the business. I'm going on because there's somebody else, something that you want me to do. Hallelujah. See, so many people, so many people are caught up. And their own selfish, greedy, little lives. That that's all they think about. See, are you, are you a child of God if that's all you think about is me, myself, and I? Are you really a child of God? Because see, God's not about Himself. God's about us. God's about taking care of us and helping us. And encouraging us. And doing the things that we desire to happen on this earth. God's all about us. So, should we not be all about Him? Huh? I mean, my gosh, we talk about tithing all the time. We plant so many seeds about tithing. And there's a lot of people that have never tithed in their life because of what the Word has said opened up a door for them to begin to reap the blessings of tithing. You know what I'm saying? Why do, do we talk about tithing every week? Because God says we need to teach my people. 
And whatever it is, I need to teach you. We're going to teach you. You know what I'm saying? If you don't tithe, that's not, that's not my fault. If you want to be selfish and greedy, that's not my fault. Because see, one thing I know, you're not going to take it to heaven with you. Somebody's going to enjoy what you're trying so hard not to spend. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's going to enjoy it. Hallelujah, sooner or later, because you will die sooner or later. And it's all going to be left to somebody. Hallelujah. So, if God blesses you because of your obedience, then don't you think He's capable of replacing what you have spent? Huh? I remember a story of Kentucky Fried Chicken. I heard this story many, 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 many years ago. Kentucky Fried Chicken was going out of business. They were shutting down. They, they about to lose everything they had, all the money they invested in it, everything. And Colonel Sanders, this is a story I heard before I was ever born again. You know, he said, Father God, I will give you 90% of my earnings and I'll keep 10%. Overnight, McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken, overnight, Kentucky Fried Chicken turned around and they became a multi billion dollar corporation. See? That's our trust in God. That's doing what God wants us to do and not what we decide. You know what I'm saying? God's capable of doing all things. And so are we in Him. Amen? God made us in His image so we could live like Him, think like Him, act like Him, and exist like Him, and yet be entirely dependent on Him. See? We got to have our Father. We have to have Him. He is the masterpiece that I create my life after. He is the one that I want to be like as I grow up. You read through the Bible, so many people live 900,000 something years and stuff. Well, we're not going to live that way that long. Many Jewish rabbis actually teach that when God made man and stood him up, the angels looked and could not tell which one was man and which one was God. That's what the Jewish people believe. Yeah. Yeah. Because God created us in His image. The exact His image exactly. So see, you understand why it's important that we learn? That we learn to be and do what God has called us to be and do if we're children of God. So often people want sympathy. So often people want this and want that. Why are you wanting this and that? Why are you wanting sympathy? Why are you wanting some of the material things on this earth when God says that you can have everything you need? I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Huh? Yes. You will never be pop you will never be without food. I will always feed you. I will always give you good health. I walk in divine health. I haven't been sick since uh, I've been born again. I'm not saying that things have not tried to attach itself to me, but just like the other night, my knees were hurting really bad. And uh, I told my wife, I said, "Hun, I need you to lay your hands on me and pray over me. You know what? So she turned over and laid her hands on me and prayed over me. Huh? That's what I do. See, I don't turn to a man or a person, but I turn to God. God is my healer. God is my finances. God is everything in me because I want to be just like Him. Huh? Are you getting the picture? I hope you are. I hope you, every one of you are getting revelation of what I'm talking about. Because see, God is trying to build up an army of His children. His children. Okay? Are you going to be one of His children that are able to go and do the things that He's asking to do? Or are you going to be one of His child that's hanging on a string or something and, and living in the world and, and living for Him and living on the world and yo-yoing back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Because God's pretty specific. Specific. And what He says. 
And He wants us to be, to be completely, completely sold out to Him. There is no in-between. He, he tells us in His Word, He says, I'm a jealous God. And there will be no others beside before me. I'm a jealous God. Listen to my words. And I will help you. And I will give you all the things that you, that you need, that you desire. I will give those things to you. Huh? My gosh, I tell you what, I have been blessed so much. Me and my family. You know, we had houses burnt down on us. Still ain't built yet. You know, I'd like to go home one day. But when that happened, a door opened up. Got a camper. I didn't, I didn't want to live my life in a camper. I wanted a house. <laughs> so right after that, the door opened up. And I was able to buy a house for $25,000. A three-bedroom house. I mean, it was worth well more than that. You know what I'm saying? But this is all I had cash at the time. And God made a provision and said, it's yours. Go get it. So we went and got it. Hallelujah. So you understand what I'm saying? See, we have to... People... You have to have a relationship with the Father God in order for you to see the manifestations of His blessings that He promises in His Word that we have. We have everything that is promised in His Word for us to live by. It belongs to us. If you are a born-again child of God, then exactly what's in and that, and that right, Cindy. Amen. Praying over her feet. You know, going through some issues and stuff. But that's okay. Because see, God's got it. Supernatural healing. Thank you, Father God. You know what? We get up. Life and death is in the power of tongues. See, God gives us so many tools. Am I running over? I did run over. I'm sorry. I just looked at the clock. I'm a little bit over. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll wind it up. Uh, <laughs> got to going. Got to going. Hallelujah. But God's given, given us the ability to be successful. See, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So often we will speak negative things over situations in our lives and what are we doing? We're opening that realm. We're opening these words up into the spiritual realm and we cause the manifestations of what I'm saying because life and death is in the power. Our words are powerful. They are so powerful, but yet... You don't even stop and think about what you're saying. Huh? You don't. You, stop and, you don't stop and think about the things you're saying. He says, it's better to keep your mouth shut than to speak living things. It's better to keep your mouth shut. Amen? But sometimes you hear people ranting and raging, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, crazy. Man, I remember a time that I was putting siding up and I busted the tip of my finger and the nail come off and blood went to squirting and, and I went to cussing. Yeah, I went to cussing. I said, oh my God, where's this coming from, God? That was, I, I hadn't been born again very long. But then several years after that, God showed me how long He had to show me with another sore thumb. Busted my tip off again. Blood was coming out and I was jumping around. Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Oh, God! Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He said, he said, you see how far you've come? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so good, isn't He? Amen. Let's look. Uh, let, me, let me hurry up through this thing. God formed a body of a man, and yet it was lifeless. It wasn't until God put His, His Spirit and life into the body to function in much the same way it was God's life that brought life and enabled man to experience life to the very same degree that God experiences life. Hallelujah. Everything was going according to plan until Adam committed treason against God and sold out to Satan. When Adam sinned against God, he died spiritually and lost the life of God. This is the reason why we are born into a sin nature. All babies, all people are born into a sin nature until they get to a certain age, certain part in their life, and they have an opportunity to say, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Then, then our lives change. Something supernatural happens. And we become 
the loving child of our Father God. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Genesis 2.15. You got that up? I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, didn't, I was running over. It says, The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. See? That caused us to be separated from God. In Jesus, we can and are reconciled to God again. Amen? I'll stop there. Father God, I thank You for Your revelation knowledge that You give to each and every one of us if we are Your children that we're able to receive and we're able to speak. So I thank You, Father God, for Your Word. I thank You, Father God, for all that You do, Your love that You have for us. I thank You, Father God, as we go about this day to celebrate our Independence Day. I thank You, Father God, that Your protections upon all people of this earth. Father God, that the babies will be protected. Babies will not be hurt. Children will not be hurt. And Father God, let everybody have fun. Let, let Your joy spread across our nation. Father God, and let, let everybody have fun today without being hurt in any way. Father God, let this be a witness of your great love. Father, we thank you for this and we give you the glory in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You're dismissed. I'm sorry for going over.